Hola a todas y a todos. Soy David. Hola desde Berlín. I'm very happy to be here with David. Um, hi David, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, gracias por preguntar. Thanks for asking. Um, hola a todos y a todas. Hello everyone. Um, gracias por uh, estar aquí con nosotros, con David um, y conmigo, David. Thanks for being here with uh, David and with me. As always, we love to see you. Um, David, what's going on? How are you? Estoy bien. Estoy muy feliz de estar en Berlín. Uh, as you might know, I was stuck in Bogotá, Colombia with my family because of this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, estoy feliz. Uh, hace mucho calor. It's very hot, uh, hot here. Um, I was telling David that it's uh, um, hace 33 grados Celsius. Uh, this is 91.4 uh, Fahrenheit degrees, so it's very hot here. But uh, we are surviving. Um, no es un problema. Uh, me alegra estar aquí con este con estas temperaturas. I'm very happy to be here uh, with these temperatures. And um, David, we are um, aware of how difficult the last weeks uh, were in terms of uh, these Spanish Q&A sessions because we uh, tackled a very uh, complicated topic. Uh, do you remember that? Um, object pronouns and reflexive pronouns in the sentence. So we had a long review and long sessions and um, we want to, uh, present something new today. Uh, it's um, kind of interesting because we will be dealing with pronunciation and also spelling in Spanish. It's about um, stress marks in Spanish. So you remember that tilde. Um, but before we go on to that, we would like to review the sentence that we saw uh, last week, which is the homework for today. So, uh, David, I'm going to post the sentence here and maybe we can um, uh, ask um, our uh, amazing viewers uh, if they remember the sentence. Allí están los tomates. So it was about using uh, pronouns and where to place them in the sentence. And here we had the sentence, allí están los tomates, the tomatoes are over there. Um, so uh, we have two options, A or B, um, and this is a command. Uh, David, can you explain what the sentence means in, in English? Of course. So the first part, allí están los tomates, means there are the tomatoes. Um, and we talked many episodes ago about this word allí, which means it's not here, that would be aquí, but it's not all the way over there, allá. So it's kind of, it's there. Allí. So there are the, uh, the tomatoes. And then we have a command in the second part of the sentence. And this is the word cortar, which means to cut. So we're saying cut. And we want to obviously say cut the tomatoes. So we're going to use um, an object pronoun to stand in for the word tomatoes. But the question first is where does that object pronoun go? Is it in the first spot, A? Is it in the second spot, B? Or is it in either spot? Mm -hmm. So yeah, go ahead. I see people are starting to write their answers already. That's awesome. Um, I'm seeing a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. And this one, if you remember from last week, we gave you six different rules about where object pronouns and reflexive pronouns go, depending on the type of verb that you see. Um, so this one, if you remember, is the imperative form, which is like a command. And it's the affirmative imperative form. So that means you're telling someone to do something, not not to do something, um, which is a different context. So David, what is the answer here? Well, I see many right answers. The right answer is B, uh, because this is one of these special cases uh, in Spanish where we place the uh, object pronouns after the verb form. In this case, if we have a command, uh, positive imperative in Spanish, we would say cortalos. 
Uh, los, uh, meaning tomates, this is the object pronoun, direct object pronoun that we will use here in this case. Cut them, please. Uh, so, uh, yeah, congratulations to all of you. Uh, this is uh, the right answer. And just remember, uh, let's try to remember this rule. Uh, this is one of these uh, very few cases where we add the, uh, attach the object pronouns after the verb. In all other cases, let's go for uh, putting them before the verb because this is uh, the more general rule. But remember that in some cases, it's possible to uh, put them before or after the verb. Um, so I'm going to display on the screen what uh, it would look like if you were to write this sentence uh, or this word, this imperative command out, cortalos, um, just so we can kind of make it more concrete in our minds what that would look like. and review that um, we said a couple weeks ago that these pronouns that follow imperatives will always be attached to the imperative itself. So it ends up looking like one word, no spaces. And we see this accent mark over the O in corta. And that is something that might be a little confusing, uh, something we want to talk about today. Uh, and it's a perfect little segue using imperative commands um, or attaching object pronouns to make a word longer, uh, it affects how the stress and the emphasis falls on the syllables in the word. So that's why we see some accent marks appear and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Yeah, that's uh, great. And this is a great introduction to the topic uh, for today. Um, I, I'm just seeing a comment uh, posted by Mary uh, Cortalos. Yeah, that's right. But in this case, just remember to add loss uh, together with the, with the verb form. <clears throat> so there is no need to uh, add a blank space here. Uh, it's just a, a single word. Cool. So let's go, uh, to, um, let's go on to our uh, today's topic, which is stress marks. Uh, but before we learn a little bit more about how to use them, uh, let's talk about the concept of uh, syllables. So I want to uh, add here three words. Um, that are um, el, so el means he in English. Uh, as you can see, it's a very uh, short word. It's only one syllable. Then we have the word solo, ignore the dashes. It is just to indicate uh, the syllables uh, of that word. So we have solo, which means alone or only, depending on the context. So I'm here alone, estoy solo, aquí. Uh, and then we have a longer uh, word, which is inteligente, inteligente, intelligent in Spanish. So five syllables. Uh, David, what is a syllable in Spanish? So a syllable in Spanish is very much the same idea as a syllable in English. And this is something you probably learned about in English class or grammar class, um, because it comes up a lot in things like poetry, um, when you're talking about meter, but also um, really important for all sorts of languages when you're talking about stress and emphasis, especially in Spanish. So what we think of a syllable as is sort of like a word, individual sound unit of a word that usually revolves around a vowel. So we know the vowels are uh, in Spanish, a, e, i, o, u, and some different variations um, on those sounds you can combine them to make what are called diphthongs, Doesn't we don't need to get into that. But essentially, a syllable is kind of like, um, like I said, this basic word unit, the sound unit of a word. And it, it involves the, the vowel and then the consonants around that vowel um, to kind of build this little chunk. Mm -hmm. uh, and this becomes important when we talk about emphasis. So we see in the first word, L, that's a single syllable, just a vowel and its consonant that follows solo, that's two syllables and then inteligente, that's five syllables. So with that being said, I hope that makes sense to you. Um, it can be a little tricky to, to figure out where the, the syllable breaks are in words, um, but sometimes you don't even need to know. You can just look at a word and you'll be able to read it. You don't need to, to know where the syllable breaks are because it um, is pretty intuitive to read, mm -hmm. especially in Spanish where a lot of the, um, a lot of letters make the same sound, so it's not even like a crazy spelling system like English. Spanish is very uniform in that way. Mm -hmm. um, so 
David, now that I've talked about what syllables are, maybe we want to um, talk about some specific cases with words that have more than one syllable in Spanish mm -hmm. and yeah. how to know where the stress falls on them. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. When do we not need stress uh, or accent marks in Spanish? So when we are talking about words uh, that are made of two syllables or more, like inteligente, uh, we will see a pattern. So uh, for these long words in Spanish, we have two different groups. Um, and let's have a look at them. So uh, let me start with the first one. The first group um, is represented by words that end in a consonant, but it's not in nor is. Uh, so like, for example, um, we will see here words uh, where we have this, uh, this rule. Uh, let's start with universidad. Um, so here we have a word that ends in consonant, uh, which is not N or S. University, we have the word español. Uh, so you see the last letter, it's L, Spanish. We have uh, a very uh, important word in Spanish, profesor, uh, professor or teacher. Uh, there is no difference in, in Spanish. Uh, we have words like reloj, uh, clock. Uh, so you see the ending there. Uh, actriz, uh, actress, and verbs. Uh, this is uh, a very important group. Uh, verbs end in R in Spanish. R, e R, er, ir, um, correspondingly. Mm -hmm. So, vivir. This is the first group of words. And uh, it is important to remember that the ending is a consonant, which is not N or S. And this is. Um, and we will explain you uh, to you why uh, this is important. So in all these words, universidad, español, profesor, reloj, actriz, vivir, the stress falls on the last syllable. Universidad, español, profesor. So uh, just remember this. This is the first group. And the first group of words that end in consonant uh, often have the stress on the last syllable. Yeah, just try to remember that. So, um, David, do you have anything else here to add? I would say that this is so. This rule applies by default when you don't have an accent mark, um, and we'll introduce accent marks in just a little bit. But if you read a word and it has no accent marks in it this is how you should assume it's pronounced if it ends in these specific consonants that aren't N or S. So we'll get to how you can actually kind of change the, the, the emphasis and the stress on a syllable by adding an accent mark. But just for now, remember that if you come across a word, you wanna know how to pronounce it, you don't see an, ac an accent mark, um, then you can assume if it ends in a consonant that's not N or S, that the stress will fall on the last syllable. So then, we can also move on to the next group, which is words that end in a vowel. So A E I O U in Spanish, A E I O U, or um, the in this case, the consonants N or S, the ones that we excluded from the last group. So much in the same way, um, if you're trying to come, if you're trying to read a Spanish word and it ends in one of these letters, um, A E I O U, N or S, and there's no accent mark to tell you where this, the stress should fall naturally then you assume that it falls on the second to last syllable or what's known as the penultimate syllable. So we have um, some examples of words like that that we can show you as well. Um, but this is kind of the same, this is the, the group uh, that captures the, um, the sounds or the letters that weren't in the first group. So let's see a sentence like this. Um, Ellos hablan coreano. They speak Korean. That's three words in this sentence, and every word ends in one of the, the sounds that we just mentioned in the second group. So we have eos ending in s, hablan ending in n, and coreano ending in o, which is a vowel. And in every single case, we have the stress on the second to last syllable. Ellos hablan coreano. So we don't see any accent marks on these words. 
that means that we're going to default to um, pronouncing the, the stress on the second to last syllable because they end in S, N, or a vowel. Mm -hmm. David, what did I miss? Mm, I would say that there is a quick uh, way to learn this because we are talking here about the second group of words that end in a vowel, A, E, E, or O, U, or N, or S. And the stress falls by default on the second to last um, uh, syllable. So uh, let's stick with that way, with that rule, uh, because this is uh, these are the groups of words where we see that a stress mark is not needed. So let's go. Let's move on to the question: When do we need these stress marks in Spanish, David? We need them when we're breaking one of these two rules. When we have a word where the stress falls on a syllable that we wouldn't expect it to based on rule one or two that we just explained. Um, so there's an easy way to mark when we are breaking one of these rules, which is the accent mark. And the accent mark goes on top of a vowel always. So we talked about the syllable as a unit of sound that revolves around the vowel. And that means that we're gonna put the accent mark over the vowel to indicate this is the syllable where the stress should fall. So if we put the sentence on the screen, um, compro un lapis, that means he or she bought a pencil um, from the verb comprar, to buy. Usually we would say, okay, with a, with a word like compro, that ends in O, so without an accent mark, we're tempted to want to put the stress on the first syllable and say compro. But keep in mind that that's actually a different form of the same verb. Um, and when we pronounce it just slightly differently, compro, that means I buy in the present tense, I purchase. But when we shift the, uh, the stress to the second syllable, compro, we have to um, put an accent mark over the O and it actually changes the meaning. And it means he or she in the third person, but in um, the past tense. So you can see that just a slight change in the intonation or the stress of the word can change the meaning of the word itself from compro to compro. So um, because we're breaking this rule that we explained where words that end in a vowel uh, usually have stress fall on the second to last syllable, we actually have to kind of pull the stress away from the second to last syllable onto the last syllable. And we do that with an accent mark. Um, that sounds great. And let's have a look at the uh, second word, lapis. Uh, lapis ends in Z in Spanish. So it's a consonant that is not N or S. Uh, and this stress should, should fall on the last syllable. So in this case, we have a, a, an irregular case of uh, stressing the, a different syllable in the word. So that's why we add a stress mark. It is just to show the irregularity uh, in this in this case. Let's have a look at another sentence. Veo football en la televisión. I watch soccer on TV. So in this case, we have again a, a word that belongs to the first group. Uh, it's a word that ends in L. Um, it's, it is a consonant uh, that's not uh, N or S. Uh, but we add a stress mark because it is not football. It is football. Well, uh, in Spanish, uh, there are different varieties. So both pronunciations are correct. But if you don't add the stress mark, you should say football. Uh, but in many countries, uh, we uh, say football. And that would uh, um, make us add the stress mark on the U. And the same goes for all words ending in ion, uh, like Sion. Uh, where we have the last syllable, Sion. This is a uh, unit in, in, in Spanish. So this word ends in N. <clears throat> and remember that N and S are the special consonants that are um, together with the vowels. So in this case, the last syllable uh, has a stress mark because um, it is not, it doesn't belong to this uh, second group of words that we explained in the beginning where we don't need the stress mark. So this is this is uh, the idea. Just remember that in all words where the ending ion uh, is, uh, we need a stress mark like camion, canción, etc. Yeah. 
So I just put two words on the screen that follow the same pattern, la cancion song, la nacion nation, very common ending of words in Spanish, eon. Mm -hmm. And they um, should al almost always, if not always, have an accent mark over the O to kind of pull the stress in that direction. OK, David, um, let's see. So next, we were going to wrap in some of the context or the content from earlier episodes with more imperatives um, and especially this infer affirmative imperative form that we talked about. Um, so we take a sentence like, uh, yo te paso la los tomates, which could mean, am I passing you the tomatoes or do I pass you the tomatoes? And then the answer might be, si, pasalos, por favor, pasamelos. So yes, pass them, please, pass them to me, pass me them. And then the response to that might be, estoy pasándote los ahora. I'm passing you them now, or I'm passing them to you now. So this is a great way to show how the stress um, is kind of preserved. When we talk about the verb pasar, um, and you conjugate it in the, in most of its, I think all of its forms in the present tense, paso, um, except pasamos, I believe. But most of its forms um, you'll will end in, a vowel or the letter n so pasas pasan or the letter s pasas pasan paso um so you kind of move the stress to the first syllable and we want to keep that stress on the first syllable when we have an imperative so if there's one direct object following the imperative as in pasalos we're going to have to mark an accent mark over that first syllable um in pasa or uh, yeah because pasa would be the the imperative form, we, we want to keep the stress there. So pasa, pasalos. But in, of, in pasalos or pasamelos, um, those end in an S, or they might, like if you were to say, um, hablame, like speak to me, that ends in a vowel as well. Um, so the rule would tell us that we want to put um, the stress on the second to last syllable, but we say, no, we actually want to keep it at the first syllable of the verb Pas, like pasalos, pasamelos, um, or hablame. So that is a very convoluted way of saying um, what David might be able to explain a little bit better. But um, I think Crystal just asked, what does pasamelos mean? And that would mean uh, pass me them. So mm -hmm. tomatoes. But David, how would you kind of explain what I'm trying to explain a little bit better? No, I think it's it's uh, correct the way you are approaching this. Uh, when we are conjugating the verb pasar, uh, we move the uh, we shift the, the stress to the to the first uh, syllable of that verb pa, pasa. And in all cases where we need uh, object pronounced, uh, indirect object pronounced, direct object pronounced, even reflexive pronouns, what we are doing is we are uh, building a longer word. So we want to keep the stress where it is originally, where it originally belongs. So um, all words with uh, a stress on the third to last, on the fourth to last, or on the fifth to last uh, syllable um, are always indicated with this uh, stress mark. It is important. It is in all cases the same. That's why we have, uh, in this case, a verb like pasar, uh, with very different forms, pasalos, pasamelos, estoy pasándotelos. So in this case, we always stress that uh, sa syllable. Um, and that's why we use the stress mark. So just remember in, um, so we saw the first two rules, the first two groups of words um, eh, ending in vowel, n or s, this is the second group. And the first group was all words ending in a consonant which is not n or s um, so if they have a if they keep the stress uh, where um, it belongs um, then we won't we won't need a stress mark in Spanish in all cases when we are breaking the rule uh, we will need it uh, so I think and I hope this is clear to you this is uh, this also comes with practice uh, this is something that we will uh, have to practice and of course, uh, Spanish native speakers have the advantage of knowing where, where a word is stressed. Uh, this is our advantage. But uh, I can tell you something. This is 
a very, very hard topic also for native, uh, Spanish native speakers because we tend to uh, omit it. Uh, so in colloquial language, it's very normal to see people uh, uh, not using them, uh, which is uh, which makes communication a bit more complicated because once you know how to use them, uh, believe me, it's easier to understand also even grammar rules. You know, like the difference between compro, he bought, she bought, and compro, which is I buy. Uh, so that also helps us understand that uh, um, easier, I think. Um, so David, I think uh, this is uh, getting uh, a bit long today. Maybe uh, we can open uh, here the space for some questions. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have any, uh, we would be glad to uh, answer them. Um, and I see a question uh, posted here by Janice. Can you tell the difference between the sound of L and L? Um, this is actually the second part of our episode. Uh, we were planning to introduce this topic today. Uh, but I think we will uh, have a second part uh, yeah, um, where we will explain this difference. Uh, in terms of pronunciation sounds, it is exactly the same word. Uh, so we will see that the use of stress marks, uh, especially in words like with only one syllable, it is, uh, it is a special one because we use the stress mark not to uh, differentiate the way we pronounce a word, but rather to make clear that it has a different meaning. So el without an accent would mean the in, in Spanish, like el libro, the book and L with an accent mark, uh, with a stress mark, means he. So in these special cases where we have short words, uh, we will see a different meaning. Uh, and that's why um, I think um, it is better to book uh, another 15 minutes, uh, maybe next week, uh, to talk about it, uh, because it's a special one. Yeah, great, uh, great explanation, David. Um, I see some sort of like housekeeping questions. So yeah, Crystal asked, is last week's class posted on the Babel site? Um, yes, everything, all of our past lessons, episodes, broadcasts should be on this Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. And I can post the link to that here as well. Um, but I just wanted to make sure people know that they can find our lessons anytime, anywhere. Um, should we do a little challenge exercise, David, while people keep posting their questions? Yeah. I oh, think Phyllis, Phyllis asked a really important question here. Um, so when we're writing out accent marks in Spanish, we don't use, I think it's called the grave in, yeah. in French. That appears, French also has an accent mark that leans this way. It has one that leans this way. But Spanish makes it easy because it's only an accent mark that leans, I think, this I don't know. If, I think I'm mirrored in my reflection, mm -hmm. but yeah. I think it's this way. Um, yeah. So, like, if the letter O were right here, then it would. It's kind of falling like forward, like a forward slash, like that way. Anyways, Phyllis has the right idea here on the screen. Um, we always use the accent mark that she has typed out here, and we don't use any other ones um, like this French diacritic right here. Um, and there's also the tilde the squiggly line over the N, but that's specific to the N as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's great. Um, so Dana asked, this is an important point. Um, is there a class next week on the 18th? The other Tuesdays in August are listed, but not the 18th. So actually we will be taking a week hiatus, a little break next week, um, but we'll be back the week after that. So um, we are sad not to be with you for, for one week this August, uh, but we'll be back the same time in two weeks from today, um, August 25th, I believe, at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Good question. Um, so if uh, there are no more questions, Oh, Kelly asked, sorry, I, I just keep diving into these questions, but this is an important point that I forgot as well. The U with the two dots above it, what does that mean? I'll type it out here. 
um, because this also appears in Spanish. And this is in, you might've seen this in German a lot, actually. Um, it's called an umlaut. And it appears over the letters A, O, and U. But in Spanish, we see it a little bit um, in words like vergüenza, shame, um, or what else? Cigüeña. Um, what do you like say? Cigüeña. Uh, I don't actually know the, the name of this bird in English. Uh, that's the bird that uh, um, should is supposed to bring babies. Uh, the stork? The stork, yeah, cigüeña. So I'm C adding this um, here on the on the screen. Okay. This is called la cigüeña in, in Spanish. Yeah, I think this is uh, this is an interesting question, the stork, yeah, yeah. cigüeña. So as we see here, usually the combination of letters G-U-E or G-U-I is pronounced like a hard G. Uh, guerra, war, guitarra, guitar. So if we want to actually make it into a, uh, like a gua sound, we have to put this, uh, these umlauts over the U um, in a word like vergüenza, which means shame. And that indicates to you that it's going to be, you're not going to say vergenza as you'd be um, probably inclined to do. What most Spanish words, when you see G-U-E, you say que. But in this case, we say vergüenza. So that's another way to indicate that the pronunciation is kind of breaking a rule that you would expect from it um, by default. So, um, so both Gail and Susan are asking about typing accent marks on their keyboard. Um, it depends on which keyboard you have. If you have a Mac, um, I can tell you, because I have a Mac, and um, the, the commands are different on different keyboards, and you can Google. Uh, how to type accent marks on a PC or on a Mac if you want uh, a comprehensive list. Google is really helpful in that way. Um, but on a Mac, to, to type the Spanish accent mark um, over a vowel, you type option. And you hold option, you press the letter E. And you'll see that one a little accent mark appears where you're typing. And there's like an underscore under it, as if it's like, tell me what vowel to put um, a letter or to put an accent mark over. So then you type the actual vowel. Um, so you hold Alt and E at the same time. It'll type the accent mark for you. Then you press O, A, I, whatever you want, and it'll put the accent mark over that letter. OK. Um, so David, I think we should start maybe wrapping up just to be conscious of time. But mm -hmm. we could also um, do our little test exercise that we had planned as well. Yeah. But before we test you, uh... I wanted to say uh, briefly that this is only over the letter U in Spanish, mm -hmm. uh, these two dots. Um, it's only just to uh, add a, a value to the sound U in Spanish. In the cases where we have GUE and GUI uh, to be pronounced like GUE and WE. It is just this. Uh, and this is the only um, use case of these uh, DRCs in, in, in Spanish. So. Uh, don't worry, uh, we don't have more special characters. It's only the ñ and all these trace marks uh, on the vowels and the deresis in, in, in Spanish. Oh, is that what it's called, David? It's not an umlaut, it's a deresis? Deresis. It, this yeah. is the name in Spanish, so I don't... Uh, maybe it's uh, the same in English. I, uh, you don't use it, you need it in, in English. Right. Um, there is no need to name it. Um, so um, yeah, let's um, play a short game. Uh, David and I collected some uh, words. It's three, four. And I want you uh, to tell us whether this is uh, right or wrong, uh, the way we spell this word. And let's uh, start with corazón. So you can uh, let us know if it's right or wrong. So in this case, we have a word that ends in N. And I would say corazón. So the last syllable is stressed. It's a word that belongs to the second group. Just remember, uh, most of the words uh, in Spanish that end in N, S, or vowel are stressed on the second to last syllable. But in this case, we have a word that is breaking the rule. So this word, uh, which means hard in Spanish, el corazón, uh, is correctly spelled. That's right, Kelly and 
uh, Gaika uh, responded that well. So let's um, try that this one. Um, what's the word for airplane in Spanish? I guess you know it. And the word is called um, avion. And I would like you to uh, to have a look at this, how we spell this. And is this right or wrong in Spanish? Avion. So let's um, identify the syllables here. We have a. This is a syllable in Spanish. It can also be only one a vowel. And the second syllable is bion. A bion. Yeah, I see many right answers. Um, it's actually wrong. Yeah, uh, because the accent, this is a word ending in N and S, and its stress should fall on the second to last syllable. So if we don't add a stress mark, we should pronounce this like avion. But this is not the case, so we say avion. So um, I think 99% of all the words ending in ion in Spanish have the accent, uh, the stress mark on, on over the O, uh, avion. So uh, I think uh, Wendy uh, spell it right, avion with a stress mark. Um, this is uh, great. Um, let me go uh, for this, uh, let me pick this work. Uh, unit, how do we say unit in Spanish, uh, David? We say unidad. Mm -hmm. Unidad, unidad. We are posting this here, so. Do we need an accent mark there if we say unidad? So this word belongs to the first group where we have words ending in consonants that are not an S. It's a D at the end. And we stress the last syllable. So, uh, this is a tricky one, yeah, because we tend to think that we need a stress marks in Spanish, uh, but let's try to remember the, the rules. So words ending in consonant that are not, uh, that is not an S or an N uh, should have the stress on the last syllable, uh, which is the case here because we say unidad. We don't say unidad or unidad. We say unidad. So in this case, as um, uh, we see here many um, um, right answers. So Susan says, correct as, is, as it is. Yes, so no need for an accent. Um, we will have more practice, uh, I think, next time when we, uh, when we see uh, you here and I think in the meantime, you can keep practicing, uh, reading some words. Uh, you can also try to learn these rules, uh, the two uh, groups of words, because that's very useful. When do we need these stress marks? When there is uh, something breaking the rules. And yeah, make sure that uh, you take the word, that you check the ending, and that you um, remember, okay, this is a word ending in vowel, N or S, then it should have the accent on the second to last syllable. And I think sentences like ellos hablan coreano um, are useful because we can remember that case. Um, and then we have also other languages like aleman, uh, German in Spanish, aleman, where we have the accent on the uh, last A because it's a word ending in N. Um, that uh, doesn't have the stress on the second to last syllable, but on the last syllable. So I know this is a bit complicated when we talk a lot about this, uh, but this comes with practice and uh, some special words uh, where we see these uh, rules being broken are very special. So we should uh, try to understand the rule and uh, use them with the right stress mark. Very well said, David. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to maybe say goodbye for this week? Um, 
understanding that we'll talk about pronunciation in future episodes because there's a lot that we could talk about um, as well, whether it's stress and accent marks or special exceptions. Um, I think we should definitely cover some more yeah. down the line. But I think for today, we will go ahead and wrap up and, and say goodbye, um, keeping in mind that we won't be here next week. We are so sorry about that. But we will be back the week after on August 25th, mm -hmm. uh, same time, 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, if you have questions in the meantime and you want to connect with us on social media, we'd love to hear from you. Our team is ready to answer your questions here on Facebook on this page um, or on our YouTube channel. That's where you can find a past broadcast as well. Um, we also have TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, all at Babel USA. Um, we're very excited to connect with you. Also, our Quora space uh, called Everything Language, which I moderate, um, is a really cool tool uh, for language learners of any language. And then there's also Babbel Magazine, our digital magazine, um, which is equally as amazing. So feel free to check out all those resources. Um, David, if you don't have anything else to say, we can just go ahead and say, uh, oh, yeah. go ahead. Sorry. I'd like to say goodbye. It's always a pleasure to, uh, to be here with you, uh, to practice Spanish with you. And we do have a, a kind of a present for you. Uh, Maybe you remember that we promised to uh, uh, create a compilation of all the sentences that we, we've seen uh, over the past weeks. So we would like to share with you a document. Uh, it's a Google Doc where you find uh, the sentences that we've been using uh, in the past uh, so that you don't have to take notes or remember um, the sentences. So uh, check that here. I know the link is very long. I cannot, I mean, we cannot make it shorter and easier to um, adding the URL section of our uh, favorite browser. Uh, but yeah, check that one and yeah, let us know what you think. And I hope this uh, uh, document is useful for you. And these uh, were my last words. Thank you very much for your attention, for your time. And uh, um, I am looking forward to seeing you in two weeks. Um, I posted the YouTube link to, I think it should take you to the playlist of all the past 15 videos. Um, so that should make it really easy. But if you need, if you can't find it, if I somehow messed up the link, which I'm sure I did, then just comment below and we'll try to get you the right one. Um, and I'm also posting our social media handle, which is at Babel USA. Okay. Thanks again, everyone. We'll see you in two weeks. Um, yeah, David has put the link to that Google Doc that he mentioned right here. Um, so we will catch you soon. Wish it were sooner, but we will be back. Adios a todos y a todas. Gracias. Hasta pronto. Hasta pronto.